Hello and welcome back. In my video last week, I shared 14 very cool uses for OpenAI's GPT-3 API. Since then, GPT-3 has only grown more and there's been even more people using it, messing around with it, making cool stuff with it. So I thought I'd make a follow-up video with 14 more use cases for GPT-3. Now, I don't know why I always land on 14 instead of 15 or 12, but there you go. <laughs> so to start with, uh, this individual uh, basically made something which would be useful for robotics applications. Um, and so in this, he describes an object. In this case right now, he's typing in stuffed animal or can of soup. And when he hits the blue button, it suggests, suggests different actions you can take with it, right? Interdimensional portal, open, close, travel through, crazy. And so what it's doing is it's taking in an object and suggesting different actions, perhaps physical actions that could be done with that object. And this is all based on data within GPT-3 or the model's understanding of what are the things you can do with that kind of object, right? Peel, slice, cook, mash, bake. So I imagine this could be very useful for a very generalized robotics application, just so that when it's receiving a voice command, it can uh, receive it, interpret it, and even know if a certain thing is within the realm of possibility, right? Uh, anyway, so this is a very cool application for GPT-3. I love things that are in this uh, vertical of robotics. Uh, and I didn't imagine GPT-3 could be used for the robotics field because GPT-3 is mainly trained on text data, but awesome application, there you go. Uh, in this other example, uh, Max has uh, is asking GPT-3 for advice. And so these are 10 suggestions on, on how he could succeed. <laughs> uh, number six is ask her to read a line of data. Number seven, send them a file and have them decode it using data science. Now this, this might, you know, I, I shared this cause I just thought it was funny. I liked that, you know, these are actually pretty funny and decent suggestions. Uh, I felt, you know, there was good punctuation, good grammar that GPT-3 made for this, but I, I, I really did want to share it because I feel GPT-3 and especially in the future GPT-4 could actually be used for advice. Maybe not necessarily for, for this kind of case for romance, but for business advice, for techno, te technological decision making, that kind of stuff. Uh, this is cool and fun now, but in the future I feel like uh, uh, GPT models might actually become quite useful advisors on many kinds of decisions. In this one, uh, McKay Wrigley has uh, basically got GPT-3 generating 10 random questions on a topic, in this case, early American history, and also GPT-3 is answering it as well. <laughs> so it generated, uh, when was the Declaration of Independence, who was pictured on the $100 bill, and also answered it as well. You can see below. Uh, very impressive. Uh, you know, it does make you question the future of education. And, you know, for a long time now, we've been, you know, saying anyways that are tests really that important or indicative of success if you can simply regurgitate information? Uh, clearly, GPT-3 is capable of regurgitating information. Maybe this will uh, accelerate that timeline of getting away from standardized testing. Uh, in this example, uh, they are using natural language to generate charts. So yesterday in the restaurant, I ate three apples, five pears, and two oranges. That is all they needed to submit in order to generate the bar chart. Um, now this is significant if you've ever had to make a bar chart or any kind of chart for a website using a library or a tool. Yes, there's a lot like d3.js is an awesome library, but it is often a pain. I felt even using Google charts. And so just being able to use natural language to just instantly generate these charts and even do even less coding, I think is a really exciting possibility. Uh, in this case, uh, somebody has uh, got GPT-3 translating legalese into English. So if you don't know, legalese is just like very intense legal language, uh, which is basically ordinary people can't really understand it. It's just so legal. Uh, so up here is the legal clause. The company and the founders will provide the investors with customary representations and warranties examples, which are set out in Appendix 4. And the founders will provide the investors with customary non-competition, non-solicitation, and confidentiality undertakings. In plain English, GPT-3 has translated and summarized that to 
The startups and its founders will provide the usual assurances and guarantees on facts about the business. The founders will also agree not to work for competitors, poach employees or customers when they leave the startup and respect confidentiality. Now this, this seems incredibly useful. You know, I did not understand that legal version of that paragraph. When I read it in plain English, it makes perfect sense. Uh, this is an awesome example, awesome usage of GPT-3. And I wonder what implications it has for the legal industry, uh, what implications it, have for, it has for contracts, um, and what else in the space of legal could GPT-3 be used for. Uh, in this case, uh, this person has used it to essentially translate natural language financial transactions into a balance sheet financial statement. This is critical for accounting. Um, this is really exciting because I, I do think a lot of people when it comes to accounting and finance, um, they have no problem describing in natural language or just in their in English or whatever language they speak, what were the transactions, what were the activities of a company. Um, and it's actually once it's in the sheet and understanding the sheet, that's the hard part, right? So perhaps there's a more usable future of accounting where people can just interact with you know, software programs, tax programs, these kinds of personal finance programs, just organically how they would speak to a person. And that would be enough for the program to generate all their tax reports, all their filings, all that kind of information. And overall accounting and financial stuff would be a lot more usable uh, and friendly for everyday people who don't have a background in accounting or finance. Uh, in this example, uh, someone has used it to generate RPG backstories. Um, RPG games are huge. People are big fans of them. And so this is an awesome use case of just using it to using GP, GPT-3 to just write fiction. And you can see here it generates uh, pretty, pretty good descriptions. They're grammatically correct. They're pretty engaging as stories. Let's jump ahead here. Uh, and you can also toggle between uh, different classes or types, I guess. Um, and so this is uh, also, I, this video is a couple days old now. I can't imagine how much further it's already gotten, but still very exciting. Uh, in this case, uh, this person has, is basically simultaneously using it to write code and answer questions about the code in real time. And GPT-3 is able to answer the code. Uh, this is, I think, really important to the future of programming. I think, you know, maybe in the future we will just have a prompt where you can ask how a program works, how a specific file works. And this would be really useful for onboarding developers. This would be uh, really useful just for code maintainability. Uh, this would be really useful for refactoring, right? Um, this is a great example of using GPT-3's ability to sort of uh, understand based on the code and the language that it's trained on um, to do very useful things and sort of streamline and accelerate coding. Uh, in this example, somebody's made a Google Doc, which basically can um, <laughs> sort of take text and generate its clickbait version. Um, and I'm sure if you if you click style, he had different options too, like clickbait. I think he had a paraphrase, so it can sort of more simply describe whatever you're writing. I absolutely do think GPT-3 has tremendous opportunity to uh, enhance Google Docs, make people write better, write creatively, summarize things better, maybe write more specific stuff for their industry. Like clickbait is generally more of a media thing. So if you worked in the media industry, you might consider using GPT-3 to help you write more clickbait headlines. Now, I don't know if that's a good thing, <laughs> but it's certainly a possibility. Um, next up, uh, yes, I love this one. So this is basically using natural language to write the code to generate a machine learning model. And so what's meta about this is you're using GPT-3, which is machine learning, <laughs> to generate machine learning code for the Keras library. Um, and so it's meta, but the reason that I like it is having sort of d lightly dabbled and done some machine learning tutorials in the past, I did feel, even though it was so simple, I didn't feel it was necessary for me to write the code in order to, to do it. Um, 
you're essentially just describing a neural network model and there's some light data processing that happens before. But it, I, in, in my opinion, it honestly was not necessary necessarily for me to do it. Uh, it. I don't think it requires necessarily a programmer. Anybody can do it. And so I like that this, this example is able to take natural language text and generate the model for you. Um, uh, one final thing as well as somebody else, I just want to mention as an aside, somebody else made a uh, GPT-3 model which can work with NumPy. And so a lot of that data operations and stuff for sure, uh, you can work with GPT-3, write in natural language, it will work with NumPy, uh, generate the NumPy code, and then I guess that NumPy code can be fed into this code, which is also generated by GPT-3. And basically, basically, you're able to do a lot more stuff with machine learning with no code at all, just with natural language. And that's even more exciting because more people can be involved in machine learning and building the future. Very cool stuff. Uh, somebody made a uh, use GPT-3 to basically help it make a presentation. Uh, I wish I was back in school so I could be messing around with GPT-3 more and see what it can come up with. I mean, this seems like a, a decent uh, presentation, decent representation of the topic. Uh, it's able to generate a good list. Uh, it's got some nice cool descriptions. I'm sure he made it the slideshow a little bit prettier with more stuff going on, but, but still, uh, could GPT-3 be used to aid in presentations? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, this is this is just the beginning. I feel something much larger. Uh, uh, this this is somebody who used GPT-3 for uh, sort of DevOps kind of stuff, like basically translating natural language into specific commands for AWS. Uh, if you don't know about AWS, it's Amazon Web Services. It, it, it basically is all the servers and backend infrastructure and cloud stuff you might need for a startup, for a business. Uh, and what, AWS has so many services, right? So this, this tool is really helpful because you can just in natural language describe something for one of those services, like create a bucket in S3. And through GPT-3, it's able to just generate that command for you. So you can just drag, like copy it and paste it into a command line. And now you don't need to look up documentation. Now you don't need to think about it too much. Like what do I need to type in in order to create that instance or create that bucket? Uh, through GPT-3, you're able to sort of speed up and streamline the whole DevOps process. Uh, in this case, uh, this individual has used it to help generate memes. Uh, I think a lot of this stuff around fiction and fun is a really exciting possibility for GPT-3. Uh, in the future, as GP GPT gets better, maybe GPT-4, it might get even more accurate with its memes and start understanding them better. Who knows how much of our content and entertainment in the future that we'll consume will be the result of uh, something made by something like GPT, but it's still really exciting. And last but not least, I just wanted to share this, this cool sandbox uh, library. Um, I've heard a lot of great things about it. This is you know a little bit not as exciting of a use case, but I think it is useful once you start uh, experimenting with GPT-3. It's got a very straightforward interface. Like you're basically just giving it example input that you want, example output that you want. You can keep adding examples very easily, and then you can see the output. And sorry, you can sort of enter in an example input and get back a final output after training it with these examples. And the reason I like it and I suggest this is, is actually because uh, if you do have friends over, something like some interface like this is a lot easier for them to understand and grasp and then appreciate the value of GPT-3. Uh, instead of just going to the GPT playground itself, that's I found a little bit more confusing when sharing it with friends. Uh, in any case, so that's all 14 cool use cases that I had to share. I will probably follow up with another video once once I've compiled more use cases. But I just wanted to say in the past week, it's it's been crazy seeing all the stuff that GPT-3 is capable of. This is really exciting. And even myself, I've already shared two or three use cases that I found from GPT-3. Uh, if you're interested in checking them out, for sure check out my other videos. Uh, it, it, is, it is a tremendously powerful model. Uh, and this is just the beginning. So anyways, I, I just wanted to uh, 
Thank you for watching. Please make sure you like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.